I'm very sorry to poor Belle who has to edit this sh I'm talking here for 20 minutes now. Sunset slow, hey, you know you should stay for the night. I have been putting off this video for quite a while. We shot this a couple weeks ago and I really think this is a kind of cool video because I did this for myself and not just to get some views because most of our videos I just do because there's an idea in my head or I just want to test something and I just make a YouTube video out of it. But it's quite complicated. You have so much footage you need to compare and then you need to form an opinion and then you need to find a structure to actually make a YouTube video about it. And I've been putting this off for longer and longer. So now I'm just going going with the better done than perfect motto and I'll just ring it right now with you guys and I hope you still enjoy the video. So this video is going to be about the C-Log on the EOS R against the HLG on the Sony a7 III. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Pixels. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. If you follow us on Instagram or if you've been following this channel for a while, you've noticed that we kind of had the battle going on that most of the filmmaking world have. It's Sony versus Canon. I'm a more than a decade long Canon shooter, but I switched to Sony when starting with video, then I switched back to Canon, and then every time I switched back to Canon and Sony released a new camera, I was always on a fence, hey, maybe we should switch back to Sony. So what we did a couple weeks ago is we got ourselves an a7 III and we just compared the two of them. And yes, there will be a video where we compare the EOS R to the Sony a7 III and spoiler alert, we chose the EOS R for several reasons and we'll do a complete video about that but in order to actually find out which camera we like more we actually had to test all the kind of fields that are important and since we already tested which color profile we like best on the Sony a7 III in our HLG versus Cine 4 video and if you haven't watched this it's right up here it's not up here I think it's up here Come on. If you haven't watched the video, do it right now. It's linked up here. And spoiler, we chose HLG3 because we thought it was overall the better of the picture profiles. But now that we found that out, we wanted to test this one against Canon C-Log, which we are shooting all our videos on currently on our EOS R. So this video will be about that. So pretty much all the footage you will see in this video is already graded because it doesn't really make a lot of sense to compare them straight out of camera because obviously the Canon log footage is totally flat and desaturated and the HLG is really saturated and pretty much you can use the footage straight out of camera on the Sony but I wouldn't recommend doing this with the C-Log. So maybe this is our first talking point and that point would go to the Sony because C-Log you can't really use straight out of camera. The HLG3 you can get away with just using it right as you shot it in camera. But again, like most of the footage now is being graded because it really doesn't make a lot of sense to compare them before the actual grade. So first thing that everybody is talking about when it comes to Sony versus Canon is obviously the color science. And I'll be jumping right onto that hype train with everybody else and say that Canon's color science is just amazing and for me the best in the game right now. It's so easy to get from even a lock footage to great looking colors with the Canon EOS R or any other Canon camera that we have used so far. And whereas Sony has totally improved over the last years, especially with the Sony a7, Three, it's still not as good as Canon and sometimes it's just a little oversaturated or you have a green tint to it or in general everything just really really pops out which is something you might like but for me I like a more desaturated look to it that actually uh, feels more like a cinematic movie rather than a video or a comic uh, which the Sony sometimes does so for me overall the color science goes 
close to the Canon um, when it comes to overall color grade. And if you want to see how we actually went from uh, grading C-Log footage to really great looking colors in 30 seconds, watch our latest video. I link it up here and then you can come back to our video if you want to. So now let's just jump right into our second topic and that is shooting at night. Because as great color science most cameras have when shooting at night and with artificial light, that might actually change a lot. Granted, we only shot at custom white balance. We didn't let the camera choose the auto white balance. But here, when we actually tried that, the Sony produced really garbage results when using the auto white balance, which I wouldn't recommend shooting for video anyway. But just since we're doing a test here, we did. And the results were just all over the place. But when using custom white balance, I actually preferred Sony colors when shooting a night a lot of the times. For some reason, there was just a broader spectrum of colors and they actually looked more lifelike to me than what the Canon produced under artificial lighting when there wasn't really a lot of light out there. And this might actually has to do with exposing of the C-Log because C-Log needs a little bit of light, which does any log footage for that matter. And again, like I said, we're not shooting with a lot of light, uh, artificial or natural, I feel like the Sony produced better looking footage at night most of the time. So this point goes to the Sony when you want to shoot at night. And since we're already on the topic of shooting at night, uh, obviously when shooting at low light, noise is mostly an issue. So let's just talk about the C-Log and the HLG3 footage when it comes to noise in general. And I actually found out that the log footage has a lot more noise to it, especially in the shadows than the Sony does in any matter. So this is actually something that we are getting rid of in post with uh, just a little bit of noise reduction. And then the footage looks amazing. But keep in mind that you have to go that extra step a lot of the times because the Canon C look produces a lot of uh, noise in the shadows. And that didn't really get away with overexposing because I don't think you should overexpose C look too much as does uh, other log footage, for example, example S-Log footage, you have to overexpose a lot to actually get to the right point. Whereas with C-Log, I think just exposing right around 50 to 60 um, IRE on the skin color is probably the best you can do. And maybe just lightly overexpose it from zero, but in general, just try to just keep it more on a zero level, but that sometimes produces a lot of noise in the shadows. So keep that in mind when working with C-Log footage. So when it comes to noise, the clear winner is definitely the Sony with its HLG3. So there's definitely no comparison because yes, when shooting on the EOS R with C-Log, there will be a little bit of noise. So next up on our list is dynamic range because a lot of people say that Sony has so much better dynamic range than Canon. And since they have a hybrid HDR color profile like HLG3, that should actually make for way more dynamic range than the Canon, right? So we tested this and in a lot of scenarios, I felt the dynamic range was pretty much the same. So we actually went to a little bit of a more extreme setting where we really wanted to expose for the sky in the background, which rendered a bell in this matter really, really dark. And I tried to bring it back in post, but I really didn't have a lot of luck in exposing the sky in the background and still having bell in the foreground completely exposed right as well. But if I had to give a point to any of these cameras, it would definitely go to the Sony because I feel like the dynamic range was a little bit better. Honestly, I don't think in our scenarios where we used it, it didn't really matter too much because in neither scenario I did have enough dynamic range to actually work with it so that I had both the fore and the background exposed correctly but you definitely saw that the Sony had a little bit more dynamic range to it when it came to grading the footage afterwards. So let's talk about gradeability. 
As I've already mentioned, we did a 30 second color grading tutorial on our YouTube channel where we graded HLG footage as well as Canon C-Log footage. And like the name already says, it didn't take me longer than 30 seconds to grade either. But obviously, like I said in the beginning, C-Log is still log footage and the HLG footage comes straight out of the camera, completely saturated. So you kind of go the different opposite routes, whereas I have to bring back the saturation and the highlights and all that kind of stuff to the C-Log footage. I really don't like it having in the HLG footage too much. So I bring down the saturation and kind of work from the top to the bottom when it comes to the Sony footage. Overall, it takes me the same amount of time usually, but I still feel like I have way more options in C-Log because it's kind of hard to get rid of saturation instead of bringing it back. And that's just my taste because I really don't like the image straight out of camera that the Sony produces. So for me, I kind of feel like I would definitely give the point when it comes to gradability to the Canon because I feel like I have more options in post. Instead of with the Sony, I think most of the colors are so set in stone with the HLG profile that it's really harder to manipulate in post-production. So this point definitely goes to Canon. Next up on our list is the ease of use. And without further talking about it for too long, this definitely goes to the Sony. Because as I've already mentioned a couple of times now, you could definitely get away with just shooting an HLG3 and just upload the footage to YouTube or wherever you want to upload it. And most of the times people wouldn't even notice that it is not color graded. Whereas when you upload a C-Log footage, uh, chances are a lot of people will notice that something is wrong. Although I recently saw a Shakira movie where I'm pretty sure that they just forgot to color grade it or maybe they ran out of budget, but the entire video is completely flat without any colors and that looking at the video is definitely not a style choice. But anyway, so yes, usability just shoot straight out of the camera. You don't really have to worry about exposing it too much other than just looking at your monitor. So yeah, definitely usability and ease of, you know, just shooting style definitely goes to the Sony uh, because the HLG footage is a little bit more forgiving than the C-Log footage because if you underexpose the C-Log footage too much, it's really hard to get back up without completely destroying the shadows and introducing a lot of noise into your footage. And I feel like this is something that the HLG footage handled a little bit better than the Canon footage. So ease of use definitely goes to the Sony. Okay, one more topic and that I call options. And what do I mean by options? Because with the Sony, you don't really have any. And with the Canon, you could actually choose to shoot 10-bit footage externally. So if you hook up an external recorder, you could actually get more out of your uh, C-Log footage than you would in when shooting internally. So instead of having an 8-bit 420, you could now have a 10-bit 422 C-Log footage. So that would give you way more range to actually grade the footage and you have way more color information and color depth in your C-Log footage. So you do have the option with the Canon, whereas what you see is what you get on the Sony. You don't have an option to actually get better footage out of the Sony when hooking up an external uh, recorder. And there's no way to get 10-bit footage out of the Sony with the HLG3 profile. So that obviously goes to Canon and Canon actually scored that point quite easily. And our last topic is the subjective taste or basically our verdict. When looking at the footage, yes, the Sony overall is sharper than the Canon, but that doesn't really have a lot to do with the C-Log or the HLG3. And anyway, some people might like it more sharp, some people might like it a little softer. So overall, what is our verdict? Which one do we like better? And when looking at the footage, Bell as well as myself, we were pretty much mostly rooting for Canon. Granted, a lot of the time the results were really, really close and you couldn't really tell a difference right away if it was shot on the Sony or the Canon when grading it somewhat the same way. But when we had to give an edge to some of the cameras, it would definitely be the Canon because a lot of the times the colors just feel richer and just more cinematic. And cinematic is such an overview 
overused words and term in the filmmaking, especially the YouTube community, but I don't really know how to describe it better than that either. When using the Canon footage and grading it, it kind of feels more like watching a movie sometimes, whereas the Sony with its sharpness and its popping colors feels more like a video. So that is obviously subjective, but for the work that we're doing, I feel like most of the times I prefer the Canon footage over the Sony footage just by looking at it. And that is just my personal taste and yours might be different. And I'll actually be quite interested in what you say, what footage do you like better? Do you like the Canon C-Log footage better or did you like the Sony footage better? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll wrap this video up right here. I hope you actually like this uh, little review of C-Log versus HLG3. And I hope you hit the subscribe button for more videos, especially 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 the upcoming Sony a7 III versus the Canon EOS R in general and why we chose the EOS R over the Sony a7 III in the end and I'll hope to see you on the next one.